Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Driven Wild. Today, we are talking about GoPuff Gig Review. So one of the things I constantly preach on this channel is to diversify your gig portfolio. And one option you can go with this is GoPuff, which some people like, some people don't because of its unique nature. So with that said, I want to go over everything you must know about GoPuff, what they tell you versus how it actually is, and everything in between. But before we do that, let's go over some quick disclaimers. The content of this video does not contain is never intended to be legal, business, financial, tax, or health advice of any kind. This video is for entertainment purposes only. As advice that you conduct your own research and consult with qualified professionals before applying anything you find online. I also want to be clear that everything that we're going to be going over in this video is very market dependent and what applies to me and my market may not apply to you. So with that said, let's get started. What is GoPuff? GoPuff is a unique unique take on convenience store delivery. And instead of using the services of a bunch of convenience stores in the area, they use their own warehouses and fulfill deliveries and have their own independent contractors deliver for them or at least most of the time, we'll get into that later. Using this method, they are claiming they, they can have your deliveries done in 30 minutes or less, which if anyone needs a reminder of Domino's and why you should never make claims like that, this is it. <laughs> now, before we go too much deeper into GoPuff and the overall details of it, I do have to say they're one of the very few apps that capitalize on alcohol and tobacco delivery specifically very well, so take that for what it is. Sign up requirements. So in order to be a GoPuff driver, you need to be at least 21 years of age or older, which makes sense because if you're going to drive for GoPuff and deliver adult beverages and adult things, you should be an adult yourself. Have a valid U.S. driver's license, to be expected. Have a vehicle and insurance in your name, to be expected. Have a smartphone with the most up-to-date operating system, which also means you have to download the app itself, which that used to be where you had to go on to their website and download it from there because it wasn't available in the app store now they actually have their own app in the app store so that was a good update in my opinion work expectation so similar to every other gig app you are paid for the work you actually do not for your time in most cases we'll go over that later as well and you're also paid for every delivery unlike gig apps however you need to be on standby at the warehouse and wait for bin requests to come in you can schedule yourself in or show up to the warehouse and tell them you're there to work, which is not always welcome. Some places are very particular about having too many drivers, but it really depends on the situation. Also, keep in mind with these deliveries, you cannot see the tip until you finish the order. So realistically, you're not going to know how much you're going to be paid until it's already done, which takes away from the point of being selective on who you work with and how far you're really willing to go. Income expectations. Delivery Every partner pay consists of variable base pay, tips, and boost. And if you're one of their scheduled delivery partners, you also are granted wait time pay, which wait time pay is scheduled minutes while waiting at the facility multiplied by the wait time rate, which is about 20 cents a minute. However, you're only able to receive this when you're on a scheduled block, you're online, you're at a facility, and you don't have an order assigned. If you're waiting for an order to be finished, that doesn't count as wait time. It's only when you don't have an order already. Speaking of, you're ineligible when you are assigned an order, you leave the facility for any reason, you go offline, or your scheduled block is over, or you're just off block in general. So a lot of drivers won't even be granted wait time pay unless they are willing to fight for those scheduled blocks. And sometimes the variable pay they get per order is absolute trash. Now, in this order, they have five deliveries, 40 minutes of driving with 7.7 .7 miles, and being paid $5.74. Yikes. The base pay used to be a minimum of like $3 per delivery, and some people are saying with the variable base pay, they've actually lost $300 for each week that they're working now. Now, that being said, sometimes you end up with a lot of deliveries, but the orders themselves are 
going to last very little time in general. Like this person from Richmond actually made $306 for one hour's worth of work, but it's 65 deliveries, which, okay, that's solid. But again, that is very few and far between for a lot of people. You're also paid every week on Tuesday and the pay cycle is from 5 a.m. on Monday to 4.59 the following Monday. And you get paid via direct deposit. Is it worth it? Honestly, some people like it because it gives them just enough freedom as an independent contractor without the mindset of someone who needs to be in business for themselves. If I were to be honest, when I think of the whole gig workers are misclassified employees argument, I think of GoPuff as a prime example of it. Like if I wanted to be on standby at a location that isn't my home with the expectation that I was going to be receiving orders to fulfill and just be diddling around in the meantime, I'd get a normal job. It probably pays better than a normal job, don't get me wrong, but again, you can be ran around everywhere. Some speculate how they won't be around for much longer because of how bad their system is for drivers, but again, some people like it a lot, so who knows? Not to mention sometimes they even outsource it to other gig apps, so it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Like, some people speculate that Amazon and other gig app workers will be getting these orders in the future and they will just obliterate their own driver base which not gonna lie I wouldn't be too upset by that, but it just stinks that this is the case, you know? But who knows what the future of GoPuff is gonna look like. Maybe it'll become better, maybe it won't. Did I miss anything? Is there something else about GoPuff that I have yet to cover in this video? Let me know in the comments. Let's make sure that anybody and everybody that's thinking about signing up for GoPuff knows everything that they need to know. That way they can make the most amount of money in the least amount of time in the safest way possible way thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it as always make sure to hit the like button subscribe if you're new and i'll see you guys next time Peace.